Roswell flight test crew out here today with some local firefighters to look at how a drone could be used to help them in a hazardous material spill. We're going to start by flying over a thousand feet downrange to inspect a rail car. Let's do it. Hazardous material spills pose a deadly threat, both to first responders and the community. If our mission is successful, we will prove that drones can help keep firefighters safe while dramatically reducing their response time in this type of emergency. At the start of this exercise, we climbed on board a fire engine that took us to a nearby rail yard, where hazardous materials are transported and stored in tanker cars. For this mission, RQ-CX3 Raven was equipped with a GoPro Hero 2 sports camera and a FLIR Tau 640 thermal imaging camera. We sent Raven down range to take a closer look at one of the tankers. On the FLIR, you can see that the tanker in the foreground is a light shade of gray, indicating that it's radiating heat. This operation required constant, real-time communications between the pilot, Tekkenstein, and the incident commander, Captain Tim Blackwell. And there, uh, there will be there will be some sort of placarding or something on the the front and the rear of the car on the side, the side that we're coming in on. Okay. I'm gonna try and to it'll be the side here. it'll be about exactly halfway down on the car. And it'll be the uniform NFPA 704 placard, fairly easy to pick up. To switch to visible light for the placard. Okay. And you can see the uh, the stenciling on the front of the car there on the round. Yep, just it. underneath the stenciling is the placard, that diamond shape, and there's a there's a four-digit number in the middle of that. I got it. We are reading 2312. It's a corrosive molten phenol. Oh, great. Molten phenol is every bit as nasty as it sounds. Get seven square inches of it on your skin, and you're dead. Pan back out a little ways and then come up to the top center of the car and that'll show us the valving. As you come just left, there's those right on the very top there. Got it. And we'll just check in the valving to see if anything's leaking or if there's anything happening on there, which it doesn't look like there is. And can we go infrared right there sure with can. that view? Everything there looks happy. I don't see anything unusual there. We can go back to color. Excellent. Afterward, Captain Blackwell gave us his impression of the drone's effectiveness. We've just gathered so much information that has saved us, not just man hours, but safety. We don't have to go down range. It's, it's gonna cost us 10 people uh, in, in just numbers to go down that range. And, and that's only a thousand feet, which we can do in literally in seconds. Uh, is phenomenal the amount of time it saves us. All right, for our final exercise out here at the rail yard, the firefighters are gonna take a hose off the fire engine and string it underneath one of the tanker cars. Then they're gonna spray a little bit of water out of it, and we're gonna see whether or not Raven can detect the simulated leak. Here we go. Oh, I can already see product leaking on the ground. Okay. It's very black. It's cold. We just move around this truck. Definitely. They're right there. You you could tell a tank was leaking from a distance, and that's what we were hoping for. Firefighter Forrest Chambers described the results we got from this test. Yeah. So what we tried to do here is we uh, simulated a leak on the rail car to see if we could tell by the infrared how bad the leak was, where it was leaking from a distance, and uh, yeah, we were probably. 100, 200 feet above it and could really tell that it was leaking. I think in a row of rail cars just flying by them, you would very easily be able to tell it was leaking. All right, so that was our day with the hazmat team. Hope you enjoyed watching. See you next time. All right, fly safe. <laughs>